Alrighty, so welcome back to your next lesson of client collectors. Okay, so today we are going to be designing for the clients that you created your profiles for. So some of you might have done Ellie Simmons, uh, there was David Attenborough, uh, there was quite a few there, Michael Jordan, I think he was another one, but whoever you created your profile for, that's who you're going to be designing for today. Okay, so just before we get going, we're gonna do a little starter. So I just want you to look at this image and just have a little minute just to think about what the problem is here. So you could even write down, write down a couple notes about what do you think the problem is with this image? Okay, so just from looking at this image, I can see of a lot of things on the floor. There's toys, there's clothes, it's all a bit of a mess. If I'm gonna walk into that room, I'm definitely gonna stand on something and I might hurt my foot or I might trip up or I might break something. Okay, so there's a lot of things that um, could be done better there. So the problem here is that there's lots of things on the floor and the room is a mess. And how do we fix that? Well, this child needs somewhere to put all of those things that are on the floor. They need somewhere to store their clothes and their toys. So what we do in product design is we don't just create products for the sake of it. We're trying to solve a problem by creating a product. So the problem here is the child has a messy room. The solution or how we solve that is to give them somewhere, somewhere to store, is to create a storage solution here. That's what it is, literally, a storage solution. Okay, so we go from a problem, there's a lot of mess, the client needs somewhere to put all those things, and then we create a solution, we give them an answer, and we solve that problem, problem for them. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna talk about how to identify your client's wants and needs. Now, this is language that we use quite a lot in technology, a client's wants and their needs and what the difference is between them. Okay, so a need is something that solves a problem. Like we just looked at, that child needed somewhere to put their clothes because the clothes on the floor was the problem. So we're just gonna look at another quick example. So this is Annabelle. She loves to draw animals and has lots of different pens and pencils. When she puts them in her bag, they rattle around and they get broken. So what do you think the problem is here? Have a read of it again and just think, what's the problem? Okay, so when I read that, she loves to draw animals. She's got lots of different pens and pencils. When she puts them in her bag, they rattle around and get broken. So for me reading that, I'm understanding that the problem is that she's got nowhere really to put her pencils to keep them safe, to store them safely in her bag. So let's say that's, that's the problem. She's got nowhere to put her pencils to keep them safe. So what does that client need? Where do you put your pencils to keep them safe before you put them in the bag? Exactly, she needs a pencil case, okay? So that's her needs. She needs a pencil case, but what does she want? So a want is something that's nice to have, and that can be determined through interviewing your client. So it's really important that you talk to your client, that you ask them about things that, that they like, things they like to do, things they're interested in. So we know that Annabelle needs a pencil case, so let's ask her what she wants it to look like. So how do you want your pencil case to look, Annabelle? Oh, thanks for asking. I've got a fuzzy sketchbook that I draw in, so I'd like it to match that, or I want it to match that. All right, so we've concluded that she needs the pencil case. She might want it to look like a fuzzy sketchbook. No, so we've concluded that she needs a pencil case, but she wants it to match her sketchbook, so that's going to influence the design. So that was Annabelle. So let's think about your client. So today, this is your client's problem. Every time I put my lunch into my bag, my sandwiches get squished up by my boots. I can never find my snacks because all my belongings get mixed up. So we're going to analyze this 
We're going to analyze this sentence and we're going to determine what our client needs. So have a read of it again. You can see the problem there. The sandwiches are getting squished. We can't find our snacks. So you need to come up with a solution. How would you stop your sandwiches getting squished in your bag? We'll just give you a couple seconds to think about that. Okay, good. So we know the problem. The sandwiches are getting squished and the need. That's right. They need a lunchbox. Your client needs a lunchbox. So you're going to design it. But what do they want? What do they want that lunchbox to be? They want it to be based on their hobbies and their interests. So this is where the client profile that you made comes in handy because you've already researched your client. You already know what they're interested in, things that they like. So you're going to watch a video now and it's going to give an example of how to generate some ideas for your lunchbox design. OK, so the task is to use the information that you've gathered about your client to create two designs that's going to appeal to your client. Now, you might not like the designs yourself, but remember, you're designing for your client, not for you. OK, so just uh, talking you through briefly about uh, this example I've done. So to start with, I've split my, my page into two sections, one for each design. And I've taken a little list of the things about my client that I think are important to consider when designing. So here I'm just drawing out a simple shape for a lunchbox. So this is the first thing that comes into my head when I think about lunchboxes. Nice kind of rectangular, easy shape with a handle. Now, to me, that looks like a swimming pool looking at it from above. So bearing in mind that she's a swimmer, I thought I'll make this design just like a swimming pool and I'll draw in some swimming lanes and then I can even add in some cartoony sections over the top. Now, if you look at the success criteria for this activity, uh, one of the higher levels um, to reach that higher level is to draw your design from a different perspective or a different angle. So I've just gone in there just you know, nothing's too exact, nothing's too precise because this is just a quick sketch. So I'm just trying to draw it and um, making it 3D, giving it that kind of back vision, putting the waves on. And you can see there, I've decided to add a little drinks pocket at the side. And now what I'm doing is the next important step. I'm beginning to annotate what I've done and maybe suggesting on colors there and a little bit about why I've done it. So with these initial designs, initial sketches, it's not essential that, that you color them. What we're doing here is we're just wanting you to generate ideas. OK, so I should finish up with the, this one pretty soon. So there we go. So we've written what I've done and why I've done it. So a handle that folds flat so that it can fit inside a swimming locker again. So that's taken the needs of our client because she's going to be storing this at the leisure center and the lockers there. So you're really considering your client. We've added the drink pocket uh, at the, the left-hand side because she's obviously gonna be thirsty and need her drink when she comes out of the water. Now this design, I've kind of gone away from the swimming a little bit. And um, it turns out Ellie Simmons really likes dogs. So I'm going for a kind of cartoony dog pack lunchbox design here. That's it. Now, that obviously doesn't look like a lunchbox straight away, so it's going to need a little bit more work and a little bit of annotation as well to help kind of bring it up to the standard of what we're looking for. So this is where it gets a bit more personalized for the client. So we're adding in a medal there because she's um, a medal winning Olympian. And there we go. And I'm just the same thing I did with the first one. I'm just drawing it from a slightly different perspective. Now, you'll notice that it's a little bit wonky. I'm just doing a rough sketch here, but obviously you can take your time with this and make it um, make it as good as you possibly can. And again, I'm going in with that all important annotation. I'm saying what we've done, why we've done it. There we go. Medal to represent her Olympic career. Okay, and down the front. So it's it might not be as obvious from the drawing, but here, see we've written, it's an extra pocket for snacks. The medal at the front. And there we go, a client loves dogs, so I've used a dog to inspire the design. Okay, so that's two designs produced there, and I think that took about 10 minutes, 10 minutes to draw. Okay, so obviously I'm just rushing through it with an um, example for you, but this is uh, your challenge now to get your ideas down on paper. We're looking for two 
and we're looking for them to be annotated. Okay, so now that we've watched the video, you've got some ideas. You can have a look at this mood board that gives you some examples of some lunchbox designs. And you've got the success criteria here on the right hand side. So I will be successful if I've created two original ideas. You've drawn, you've drawn inspiration from two or more images from the mood board. You've taken your time to ensure that your work is well presented and neat and you've labeled your designs. Now pushing that, that extra little bit, you can have used a formal drawing technique to display your design ideas. So that would be the isometric that we've looked at, that we've all done in class. Your labeling is clear and shows good spelling, punctuation and grammar. And you've shown your design from different perspectives. Okay, good luck.